we are going to start with the mhtcd series of circular motion right now today we'll be discussing some brain teasing questions of circular motion first question a particle p is moving in a circle of radius a with a uniform speed v c is the center of the circle and ap is the diameter the angular velocity of p about a and c are in the ratio of okay now we'll discuss the solution of this they are telling you a particle p is moving in a circle of radius a so there is a circle of radius a so can i say this diameter this is radius a this will also be a with uniform speed v so the speed is uniform throughout that is speed is constant c is the center of the circle and ap is the diameter so a and p is the diameter okay and the particle p is moving in a circle of radius a so particle p is going round 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 it is going the angular velocity of p about a and c are in the ratio of so suppose p is there over here at any instant of time i can say p is here so if i join this and if i join this okay you know one thing that the speed over here is going to remain constant that is v is going to remain what constant now i need omega of p about a and c are in the ratio of okay so omega formula you know v is equal to r omega so omega is going to become v by r but v over here is what beta constant so can i say omega is inverse to r now you can use this relationship as omega a upon omega c will be radius about c upon radius about a means what okay omega will change with respect to the point of observation suppose you are standing here and you are observing this circle so your radius will be a but if you are standing over here and you are observing this circle you are observing this point so your radius is going to become 2a so from c the radius is a and from a the radius is going to become how much 2a so rc is a and ra is 2a so can i say omega a upon omega c is going to become 1 by 2 this question tells you a lot of thing what does it tell you it tells you that omega changes with the point of observation if you are standing here if your reference point is here omega will be something else and if your reference point is here your omega will be something else okay have you understood this question okay so omega a upon omega c is going to become 1 is 2 we'll start with the next question a particle is moving in a circle of radius r has linear speed v at a certain instant means at an instant the speed is v and its linear speed is increasing at the rate of 80 meter per second square means it has tangential acceleration what is the rate at which centripetal acceleration is increasing at that instant <coughs> now the solution they are telling you that the particle is moving in a circle of radius r has linear speed v of at a certain instant means at a certain instant the speed is v and its linear speed is increasing at the rate of 80 meter per second square this is your tangential acceleration what is the rate at which centripetal acceleration is increasing at that instant we know centripetal acceleration ka formula is v square by r because they are using the v in the question so we'll use v only this one and r is there because radius is r we want the rate of change of centripetal acceleration at that instant now whenever there is a rate of change of we will derivative we will differentiate this with respect to time so can i say this will be d by dt of acp similarly it will be d by dt of v square by r but r actually is a constant will come out so this is going to become 1 by r d by dt of 
v square. This can be written as okay. So d by dt of a c p is going to become one by r two v d v by dt. Okay, derivative derivative of this v square will become two v into d v by dt. We know one by r two v. dv by dt is the rate of change of magnitude of velocity and that we know is nothing but tangential acceleration which is given in the question so this is at this thing so what is the rate of change of centripetal acceleration it will be 2v by r into at have you understood this question so they needed rate of change of centripetal acceleration why did i write the formula v square by r because they have given you v and r the take differentiation of this with respect to time it will be 2v dv by dt and dv by dt is at which is tangential acceleration which is rate of change of magnitude of velocity okay fine with this question next question if l is the angular momentum of a body moving in a circular orbit of radius r With angular speed omega, then the centripetal force is okay. So they have given you that the angular momentum okay of a body moving in a circular radius r with angular speed omega. They have asked you centripetal force. So centripetal force is equal to how much? I need the answer in terms of angular momentum. Yeah, you know angular momentum is nothing but m v r. M stands for mass, V stands for velocity, and R stands for radius. We need the value of centripetal force in terms of L. Now, whenever this kind of question comes, we know L is mvr. Centripetal force is mv square by R. You know the formula: mv square by R, m omega square R, m omega V. We'll do one thing: we'll divide both of them. So, can I say centripetal force? Upon angular momentum, this is going to become m v square by r upon m v r. So m and m will cancel. V and this will cancel. So this is going to become v by r square. But the question over here is not in terms of v. The question over here in terms of what? Omega. Okay, because they have given you omega. So can I use this as v is equal to r omega? By r square, this and this will cancel. So what is F C P by L will be omega by r. So F C P is going to become L omega by r. So whenever they ask you, whenever they give you one okay quantity and they ask you other quantity, always try to divide between both of them. Any quantity is given over here, and other quantity is asked. Write the formulas and divide both of them. You will get a relation between them. We start with the next question. A scooter is there traveling with a velocity v. Sees a big boulder on road at a distance of r. It is better for him to apply brakes or to turn sharply. So what is it saying that there is a big boulder or a big wall? at a radius at a distance of r from the scooter so this is suppose the scooter which is there okay and this is the scooter and he sees a big wall in front of him they have asked you the question it is better for him to apply brakes or to turn sharply and he is going with a velocity v this velocity is v so when he comes and hits the boulder before he should apply brakes Or he should turn sharply. They have asked you this. Now, for we'll take two cases. Case one for braking. When he is applying brakes, his final velocity should be zero. So, can I use this formula? V square is equal to u square plus two a s. V is zero. U is the velocity which is given, and u is v only. Now we can say so. We can write this as v. Minus two a, and the distance from here to here is r. So can I say the acceleration during braking will be v square by how much r? Two r. This is acceleration for braking. 
सो द फोर्स फॉर ब्रेकिंग विल बी एम एन टू ए विल बी एम वी स्क्वेर बाई टू आर दिस इज योर केस वन इन केस ऑफ केस टू दे आस्किंग यू ही शुड टर्न द फॉर टर्निंग वी नो इन सर्क्यूलर मोशन फॉर टर्निंग you require a acceleration which is centripetal acceleration which will become v square by r because the radius will become r he has to turn like this he has to come this way and he has to turn like this so the radius will be r so the centripetal force is going to become mv square by r now if i compare the force for breaking and the centripetal force for turning can you tell me which is more and which is less can i see this is this quantity upon 2 and this is this quantity so can i say this quantity is double of this quantity so force required for turning is a double of force required for breaking so can you tell me is it easier to apply brakes or to turn sharply obviously it is easier to apply brake because the force for breaking will be half of force of turning have you all understood this very much clearly okay so he should apply brakes and not turn sharply uh next question a tube of length l is completely filled with an incompressible liquid of mass m and closed at both ends the tube is then rotated on horizontal plane with an angular velocity omega force exerted by the tube at the other end now i'll show you two solutions for this there's method number 1 and there's method number 2 now what happens over here there's an axis and there is a tube of length l so this is zero and this is length l and it is filled with an incompressible liquid inside and it is rotated with an angular velocity omega i want to find the force exerted by the tube at the other end force exerted at the other end i need to find for this i have to consider a small mass that is dm separated by a distance of x from the axis of rotation so we know the force exerted f ka formula or we can say df ka formula exerted on this small mass will be dm omega square x and can i say this thickness is dx so i can write this as dm is the mass of this element which will be mass per unit length of the whole tube into the length of the segment which is there omega square x or oh, this is the force exerted on this part small part but i need the force exerted at the other end from here to here so can i integrate this whole equation the integration of df from 0 to f we can say it is m by l omega square integration of x dx ranging from 0 to l integration of df f m by l omega square integration of x dx is going to become x square by 2 and if you substitute this will going to become l square by 2 so this answer is going to become m omega square l by 2 so i think you all have understood this thing there is an another method which is there for this it is very easy we know that force exerted is m omega square r the centripetal force exerted is m omega square r but when we have to apply newton's law we have to concentrate this whole body at a point called a center of mass and the center of mass of this tube will be always be present at a distance of half of this length that will become l by 2 so can i say this r will be replaced by m omega square l by 2 so can i say this answer and this answer are both of them the same this is by the concept of center of mass and this is done by using integration an important question says that the kinetic energy of k of a particle moving along circle of radius r 
depends on the distance covered s as k is equal to a square so the kinetic energy is a square okay the force acting on the particle is now in circular motion if there is a particle moving in circular motion obviously there are two types of force one is the centripetal force okay which we know is mv square by r and other is the tangential force this is very very important tangential force is mass into tangential acceleration so can i say the resultant force will be the vector sum of tangential force and centripetal force so our aim is to find centripetal force tangential force and then apply parallelogram law and find the net force so firstly i'll find the centripetal force you know kinetic energy is given as as square is given but you know kinetic energy is half mv square which will become as square <coughs> so mv square is going to become 2 as square right or not so can i say mv square by r will become 2 as square by r and this is given as centripetal force which we require as one thing is there second thing i require tangential force again i'll start kinetic energy is given as as square kinetic energy is going to become half mv square which will become as square so can i take v square on one side it will become 2 as square by m but i need over here tangential force and for tangential force i require tangential acceleration and you know tangential acceleration is rate of change of magnitude of velocity so i'll differentiate this with respect to time because i need dv by dt so d by dt of v square and d by dt of 2a by m into a square right this thing now this differentiation will become 2v dv by dt is going to become 2a by m as a constant derivative of s square is going to become 2s ds by dt 2v you know dv by dt is tangential acceleration 2a by m 2s you know ds by dt is velocity it's ds by dt velocity you know because rate of change of distance is speed now this 2v and this 2v is going to cancel <coughs> so tangential acceleration will become 2as by m so can you tell me what will be tangential force tangential force is going to become m into at so tangential force is going to become m into at that is going to become 2 a s m by this m will cancel okay this is 2 a s by m into m will cancel so you will get this answer now they are asking you the force exerted so this force is actually the net force now net force ka formula if i apply that is f resultant will be root of fcp square plus ft square right or not yes or no beta now what it will become root of square this 2 a s square by r the whole square plus 2 a s the whole square okay they can remove common and all that stuff and that will be the answer so according to me i think so this is the answer or you can manipulate the answer according to whatever options are given so what have we studied in this question that there are two types of force one is centripetal force which helps in changing the direction and other is the tangential force which changes the magnitude of the velocity and the resultant force will be the vector sum of fcp and ft
I think you all have understood the whole question properly. Next question. A particle of mass m is fixed to one of the light spring of force constant k. An unstrained length is L. The system is rotated about the other end of the spring with an angular velocity omega in gravity free space. The increase in length of the spring will become. Now, what is the scenario? I'll tell you that there was a spring of force constant k and unstrained length was L. Okay, and a mass was attached over here. Unstrained length is L. Force constant is k. Now it is rotated okay, with an angular speed omega. So this whole system is rotated at an angular speed omega. And because of this rotation, the spring will expand. And let the final length of the spring be, can I say it is L plus X? The X will be the extension in the spring. We require that only now. The increase in length of the spring, that is the extension, is how much? Now you know one thing, that this mass is in non-inertial frame of reference. Since it is there in the non-inertial frame of reference, there is a centrifugal force acting on him. And the inward force which is acting is the spring force. Can I say the spring force is balancing the centrifugal force? Are you understanding? Now you know spring force ka formula, we know that F spring or we can call it as the restoring force also is balancing the centrifugal force. The spring force ka formula is Kx. K is the spring constant and S x is the extension. Centrifugal force in this case will be m omega square r. So m omega square r, but r is l plus x, na? r is l plus x, it's moving in this circle, right? Right, na? if I open this, I need extension. So kx will be m omega square l plus m omega square x. So x will come common, this will go there. So x will come common, it will become k minus m omega square is m omega square l. So x is going to become m omega square l k minus m omega square. This is what you need as the extension or increase in length of the spring. So one thing has to be remembered over here that the restoring force by the spring is balancing the centrifugal force. And I have taken this mass in non-inertial frame of reference. You can also consider as inertial frame of reference where you say that the spring force provides the necessary centripetal force. Spring force provides the necessary centripetal force. That also you can do when you consider in inertial frame of reference. But in this question, I have considered the concept of non-inertial frame of reference. Therefore, I have considered centrifugal force. Have you all understood everything? So this is the extension in the spring. This question we'll see. A particle of mass m is moving in a circular path of constant radius r such that its centripetal acceleration ac is varying with time. Means centripetal acceleration is not constant, it's varying with this formula that is k square r t square, where k is a constant. The power delivered to the particle by the forces acting on it. Now, can you tell me this question is of UCM? or a non-UCM. It is obviously a non-UCM. Okay. Why? I'll tell you. You know, the formula for power is work done upon time. Okay. So, can I write this as work done is force into displacement into cos theta upon time is power. Right, no? Now, if I consider this as the centripetal force, 
सेंट्रीबिल फोर्स एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट सेंट्रीबिल फोर्स का डायरेक्शन इज रेडियल सेंट्रीबिल फोर्स इज रेडियल एंड डिस्प्लेसमेंट व्हिच इज देयर इज टेंजेंशियल सो द एंगल बिटवीन देम विल बिकम 90 सो द पावर डिलीवर्ड बाय सेंट्रीबिल फोर्स विल बी जीरो दैट मींस इनडायरेक्टली दिस हैज टू बी टेंजेंशियल फोर्स कैन आई टेल यू व्हाट इज हैपनिंग ओके दिस इज सेंट्रीबिल फोर्स this is tangential force and this is going to be the displacement also so work done by this force will obviously be zero because the angle is 90 work done will obviously be there due to the tangential force so power delivered by the force will be only tangential force and not centripetal force and the angle between ft and s is zero we need power delivered by both of them only so power delivered will be tangential force into displacement into cos 0 upon t cos 0 is 1 and power will be ft and displacement upon time is velocity so we have actually this formula right now power is tangential force into velocity but if i because if i consider centripetal force over here the power is zero because work done by centripetal force we know the concept that work done by centripetal force is zero so this has to be there and this is very very important formula now on the basis of this formula we'll derive they have given you centripetal acceleration of this centripetal acceleration formula is k square r t square the centripetal acceleration we know is v square by r k square r t square so v square is going to become k square r square T square, so V is going to become K R T. You know V, this V, we know V. But we need tangential force also. Now, for tangential force, you require tangential acceleration, and tangential acceleration is dV by dt. That will become d by dt of this V, and this V we know is K R T. so derivative of this at is going to become k r na no? derivative of t is 1 derivative of t is 1 so what will be ft beta ma na no? will become mkr na no? this is ft this is v so power is going to become ft v that will become ft is mkr into v is krt so this is going to become m k square r square t this is the power delivered and this power is delivered by tangential force and not centripetal force once more we'll understand this question power is work upon time work done as force into displacement into cos theta and we know centripetal force and angle displacement is 90 so power delivered by centripetal force will become zero power has to be delivered by tangential force displacement upon time is velocity so power is fv always remember power is fv and the direction of this force is also tangential and direction of this velocity is also tangential no? so actually it is ft vt centripetal acceleration was k square rt square we write this formula we take derivative or we take v that is krt we take derivative we get at ft will become mat and the power is ft into v substitute and we get the answer this is the power delivered in non ucm and this question was asked in the cet 2015 which was very very important okay we'll see a new question a toy car travels in a horizontal circle of radius 2a kept on a track by a radially elastic string of unstretched length a so what are the question saying that there is a track and uh, a toy car is going is going and a spring is attached to wire the radius of this track is given in the question as 2a and the unstretched length of the spring is a is the unstretched length mean the natural length of the spring is a so how much will be the stretching right now the stretching will be 2a minus the unstretched length the stretching will become a 
सो कैन आई राइट दैट इन फर्स्ट केस आर वन इज टू ए एंड द एक्सटेंशन इन द फर्स्ट केस विल बी टू ए माइनस अनस्ट्रेच लेंथ दैट विल बिकम एन आई थिंक यू ऑल अंडरस्टूड सो रेडियस इज टू ए एंड द अनस्ट्रेच लेंथ वॉज ए बट इट हैज टू गो इन टू ए सो ऑब्वियसली इट हैज टू स्ट्रेच ए मोर सो दिस इज द स्ट्रेचिंग राइट दिस इज द फर्स्ट केस Now what happens? The time period of rotation is t. So t one is t. Time period of rotation is t. Now the car is speeded up. So you know when it's speeded up, the length of the spring will increase. Now it is moving with a circle of radius three a. So now it is moving with a radius of three a. So this radius is going to become three a. This radius which is there in the circle is moving with three a. So it is moving in a radius of three a. Now, can you tell me how much will be the extension? So, unstretched length was a. Now it has come to three a. So, how much is the stretching now? Two a. So, radius over here is three a, and the extension over here in this case will become three a minus the unstretch. It's going to become two a, and the time period of rotation I don't know. Have you understood this thing? Always look at the unstretched length. Extension will be the final length minus the unstretched length. The final length over here is two a minus a. The final length over here is three a minus the unstretched length is two a. Have you all understood this question? Okay, fine. This is over. This was the question actually. Now we need the answer. Now you know that this car is in non-inertial frame of reference. So there will be a centrifugal force acting on him. And there is the spring force, which is the restoring force acting over here. Yes, this is this. So can I say in this case, the restoring force or the spring force is equal to the centrifugal force in equilibrium, right? So spring force, you know, is K x, and centrifugal force is m omega square r, right? Now, but since you need the formula in terms of t, can I write omega as two pi by t, beta? K x m two pi by t will become four pi square by t square into r. Now what is all constant over here? K is a constant. Mass of the car, toy car is a constant. Four pi square is a constant. So can I say t square will be proportional to r and inverse to x? Uh, right or not? T square is proportional to r and uh, so t will be proportional to. Root of r by x. This is our main formula which we are going to use. Now what will become? Can I know t1 or t2 upon t1 will be root of you know it r2 upon r1 into x1 upon x2. T2 we don't know. T1 is t. R2 upon r1. Now how much is that? Two. Three a by two a. That will become. That will become. 3 by 2 into x1 upon x2. X1 is a by 2a, so it becomes what? Half, na? So can I write this as t2 is going to become t root 3 by 4? And you can simplify this according to the answer. Whatever is answers are given, all four options you can uh, manipulate according to that. This is generally the answer. And this question was also asked. In our CET, MST CET, which is there, 2015. So you need to understand the concepts. It's never direct questions are asked now. They ask you all conceptual questions. Here also the concept was the spring force is balancing the centrifugal force, or we can say the spring force provides the necessary centripetal force. Convert this formula into time, and then you get the answer. Okay. Yes. A particle described a horizontal circle on a smooth surface of an inverted cone. The height of the plane of the circle above the vertex is h cm. The speed of the particle. The speed of the particle we need that is v in terms of h. V in terms of h. So what is the question saying that there is a cone? Okay, and there is a particle which is there. A mass m. Is moving in the circle, horizontal circle. Of radius how much? R. Let the radius be R. 
the height of this is 8 centimeter which is given can I take this angle as theta it's going in a circle round 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 is going this is there this is R this is the particle I need the speed of the particle the speed of the particle the direction will be tangential obviously in terms of H so what is this V in terms of this H okay now we know that uh, the weight of this particle will act downwards that is mg the normal reaction by this surface will be perpendicular to the surface that is n uh, this angle is theta right if this angle is theta can I say this angle will also be theta tell me sir why angle between two lines is theta so angle between their perpendiculars will also be theta this is two lines theta perpendicular is also theta so if I resolve this into two components n this is going to become n sine theta and this component is going to become what n cos theta you know it right now this is in centrif uh, uh, non inertial frame of reference so we can balance with centrifugal force up is equal to down, left is equal to right. So can I say n sine theta balances mg? And n cos theta balances with centrifugal force. And centrifugal force we know is mv square by r. r is the radius of the circle. So if I divide both of them, this is 1 and this is 2. If I divide both of them, can I say this is tan theta will be cancelled properly please. This will become g r by v square it will not come v square by rg no? tan theta will be gr by v square but you know tan theta from this triangle this big triangle tan theta is going to become will become r by h tan theta is going to become r by h r by opposite upon adjacent so tan theta is r by h will become gr by v square this is r and r will cancel so what is v square hg so what is v root of h g now whatever h value is given to you you can substitute this and get the answer so always remember this conical funnel sum is uh, more important v is under root h g next question the bob of a simple pendulum of mass m is performing oscillations such that the tension in the string is equal to twice the weight of the bob while it crosses the mean position. So when it is there at the mean position, the tension is twice the weight of the bob. The tension in the extreme position. So they are telling you two positions over here. They are giving you mean position and they are asking you about extreme position. So if I take a simple pendulum, this is your mean position and this is your extreme position. And this angle let it be theta. This is mean position. Can I say it is MP and this is extreme position which is EP. And we know at extreme position velocity is zero. You know this thing. How to solve? They have given you tension at the mean position is twice the weight. The weight of the bob is mg. No? So twice the weight. Given you this thing. They have asked you what is the tension in the extreme position and how much? Now I explained in the earlier synopsis that tension at the mean position is mg 3 minus 2 cos theta. It's proved. This is the formula. Tension at the mean position is mg 3 minus 2 cos theta. But tension at the mean position is given as 2 mg. Is mg. 3 minus 2 cos theta mg and mg cancel so 2 3 minus 2 cos theta so cos theta is going to become half so theta will be how many degrees 60 degrees so this theta which is there is 60 degrees they had given you the tension at the mean position theta I got as 60 degrees I need tension at the extreme position now tension at any point whether it is anything, any position is mv square by r 
plus mg cos theta. But we need tension at the extreme position where velocity is going to become how much better? Zero. So we'll put over here zero. Plus mg cos theta. Theta is 60. Cos 60 is half. So tension at the extreme position is going to become mg by 2. So we can say that tension at the mean position was twice of the weight. And tension at the extreme position is half of that of the weight. And this formula you should know. Otherwise, you have to derive the whole thing and then prove it. So, tension on the mean position is mg3 minus 2 cos theta and tension at any point is mv square by r plus mg cos theta but velocity at the extreme position is going to become what? Zero. Next question. A bucket, water bucket of mass m is revolved in a vertical circle with the help of a rope of length r. If the velocity of the bucket at the lowest point is under root 7 rg, then the velocity and the tension at the highest point is how much? So they are telling you in the question that there is a bucket and the lowest point the velocity is given as under root 7 rg. When it goes in a vertical circle, I need the velocity at the highest point, this velocity at the highest point I need and also I need the tension at this point. We know some basics. What is the basics? That velocity for completing minimum circle, minimum velocity at the bottom should be under root 5rg. And the velocity over here should be under root rg. We know this much. So if I square both of them, this will become 5rg and this will become rg. Okay, this, the inner, uh, the velocity square will become 5rg and the velocity square over here will become rg. And if I see the difference over here, the difference in the velocity ka squares will be how much? 4rg. Always remember the difference always remains constant. If here the difference is 4rg, then here also the difference has to be what? 4rg. Here it is 5, so here it is 1, that means the difference is 4. So if here it is 7, then over here this has to be how much? 3. Because the difference is remaining how much? 4. So the velocity at this point has to be under root of 3rg. 5 minus 4 is 1. 7 minus 4 is 3. The difference always remains the same. So what will be the tension at this point? Tension at the highest point, you know, is mv square by r minus mg. So, if I calculate, this is root of 3rg, the mv square by r, so mv square by r minus mg, you know how much will they be, if I substitute, it will become m by r, v square will become 3rg, it will become 3mg minus mg is going to become how much? 2mg. So we can just orally do it. We need not calculate anything. That the difference between the bottom and the highest, the square of that has to be 4. So if this is 7, this is 3. This is 5. This is 1 because the difference is 3. The uh, difference is 4. Here also the difference is 4. And the tension over here is mv square by r minus mg. If I substitute this inside, I'll get the answer as 2mg. That's fine. Hello, the next sum. The length of the simple pendulum is L. Its bob is rotated from rest and projected vertically horizontally with a velocity of root of 7 gl by 2. The maximum angular displacement of the bob so that the string doesn't slack. This word is very important. Does not slack means at that point, tension is becoming zero. We have done sums based on normal reaction becoming zero when they say that not losing contact. So over here, doesn't slack means tension is becoming, you have to take in the question, tension is becoming zero. Okay. Solution, you know, this is the pendulum and it is hit with a velocity of under root 7 gl by 2. We know this under root 7 gl by 2 is less than under root 5 rg, but greater than root of 2 lg. So it is going to leave the circle somewhere over here in this quadrant with some velocity v which I don't know. Okay. 
this way and it is going to perform projectile motion after that this is going to perform projectile motion after that can i say this is any point and the word over here is doesn't slack means we take tension as zero at the minimum point where the tension is zero so tension at any point p will be mv square by r plus mg cos theta this we know from the portion also hey yeah, that's fine tension at any point p this is any point p tension at any point p is m by r but r over here is l na? m by l v square now this is u and this is v you know while going up speed becomes less so v square will be u square minus 2gh v square will be u square minus 2gh plus mg cos theta but you know this h i explained in the synopsis h is l1 minus cos theta so tension at any point p is going to become m by l u square minus 2g h is l 1 minus cos theta plus mg cos theta and we'll close the bracket right right now if i open this uh can i do one thing this is tension at any point p m by l u square so u square will become 7 g l by 2 7g l by 2 minus if i open this will become 2g l plus 2g l cos theta plus mg cos theta right na baba you understanding what's happening now oh, this bracket is closing till here only this is mg cos theta the outside if i multiply this inside again so tp is going to become Uh, can i cancel the l throughout okay it will become 7 mg by 2 minus 2 mg plus 2 mg cos theta plus mg cos theta but you know tension at this point p is zero this we have to take doesn't slack tension at this point p is zero so if we take the zero this you have to take it as zero 7 by 2 mg minus 2 mg okay 7 by 2 is what 3.5 3.5 mg minus 2 mg is 1.5 mg that if i take that side zero if i take that side it will become minus 3 by 2 mg so this is going to become minus 3 by 2 mg And 2 mg cos theta plus mg cos theta, this thing together will become 3 mg cos theta, right? This and this will cancel. This and this will cancel. So cos theta is minus half. Cos theta is minus half. Now you know how much minus half. Minus half is how many degrees, Baba? How much? 120 degrees. So can I say this angle is how many degrees? 120 degrees. that proves that it is going to leave the circle in this quadrant at that point when the tension becomes equal to zero and after that is going to perform projectile motion have you understood this question we are always solving by tension because they have given you doesn't slack tension at any point p is mv square by r plus mg cos theta velocity at this point is u square minus 2gh but h you know is l1 minus cos theta and if you solve by putting tension is equal to 0 you get theta as how many degrees 120 degrees a body is moving in a vertical circle of radius r if the ratio of maximum to minimum speed is root 3 is to 1 the ratio of maximum to minimum tension in the string so they have given you maximum to minimum speed is root 3 is to 1 means solution v maximum to v minimum is given as root 3 is to 1 and they have asked you t maximum t minimum equals how much but you know velocity is maximum at the lowest point that is under root 5 rg 
and velocity is minimum at the topmost point that is under root r g. So if I square both of them, can I say v maximum square minus v minimum square? V maximum is under root 5 r g, so square will become 5 r g at the lowest point. And V minimum is there at the topmost point, it will become under root RG, so square will become RG. So can I say the difference is how much? 4 RG. This we had done it in the previous questions also. So V maximum minus V minimum square is 4 RG. This is one equation which is given in the question. This is second which I have derived from the knowledge of vertical circular motion that V maximum minus V minimum is under root 5 RG ka square minus RG ka square it will become 4 RG. Can I solve them simultaneously? If I put 1 and 2, so if I say V maximum is root 3 times V minimum. So square of this will become how much? V maximum is root 3 times V minimum. If I put this, V maximum square will become 3 times V minimum square. Right now, beta, root 3 ka square is 3, V minimum square. Minus V minimum square is going to become 4 RG. What is this? 1 in Two, no? Put 1 and 2. So it will become what? 2V minimum square. That's 4RG. So V minimum will become this 2 and 2. Under root 2RG in this case. Right or not better? And how much is V maximum? V maximum will be root 3 times of this. Root 3 into root 2 is root 6. So V maximum will be how much? Root 6RG. So you know the values of V maximum and V minimum. One was given in the question and other we have taken it from knowledge of circular motion. But they need T maximum upon T minimum. T maximum is MV square by R plus mg but this has to be v maximum ne? t maximum v maximum okay what is t minimum mv square by r minus mg but this will be v minimum right or not if i put v maximum look over here root of 6 rg if i put the square of this will become 6 rg r and r will cancel will become 6 mg plus mg will become 7 mg by putting this v maximum inside here and if I put V minimum over here V minimum is how much under root 2 RG ka square will become 2 RG R and R will cancel will become 2 MG minus MG is going to become MG what is the ratio of both of them T maximum upon T minimum is 7 MG by MG will become what 7 is 2 1 so first what did I do I took this then from knowledge of circular motion I took this I solve them simultaneously. I got V maximum, V minimum. Tension maximum at the lowest point is MV square by R plus MG. But take V max, max, max. And min, min, you substitute inside. You divide both of them. You get 7 is to 1. Next question of flywheel rotates about a fixed axis and slows down from 300 RPM. So this is a frequency 300 RPM, 200 RPM in 2 minutes. How many revolutions does it complete in 2 minutes? So how many number of rotations or revolutions does it complete on how many minutes? Two minutes. So what is the data given? I'll just write that. That initial frequency was 300 RPM. If I divide by 60, become 5 RPS. N2 will become 100 by 60. So 5 by 3 RPS. In a time of how many minutes? Two minutes. That is how much? 120 seconds. I need to find number of rotations in 2 minutes. Now you should know that what is number of rotations. Okay, You know in one rotation it completes 2 pi. 2 rotations the theta will be 4 pi. 3 rotations theta is going to become 6 pi. Okay, So n rotations Theta is going to become 2 pi n. Can I say in n rotations, in n rotations, theta will be how much? 2 pi. This is the formula. One rotation, 2 
टू बाय टू रोटेशन फोर बाय थ्री रोटेशन सिक्स बाय एन रोटेशन थीटा टू बाय एन सो एन आई विल गेट बाय फाइंडिंग थीटा आई नीड टू फाइंड एन ना सो वेन आई गेट थीटा आई गेट एन सो अवर एम इन द सम इज टू फाइंड थीटा बाय यूजिंग काइनामेटिकल इक्वेशन ना फॉर फाइंडिंग थीटा यू नीड अल्फा ना यू नो अल्फा will be this formula you know is d omega by dt that is 2 pi n2 minus n1 divided by t this we know the formula alpha is d omega by dt and omega is 2 pi n so this can be written as 2 pi n2 minus n1 by 5 by 3 minus 5 by t t is how much 120 right on or beta so this is going to become by 60 will become pi by 60 and this will become minus 10 by 3 right Minus ten by three, na three five is a fifteen minus minus ten by three. It will become this, and this will cancel. It will become minus pi by eighteen. This is alpha, and alpha is angular retardation because it is stopping, is slowing down, it's slowing down. Alpha is minus. We find alpha. Now we need to find what theta. Okay, how to find theta? Can I say theta? Will be omega one t plus half alpha t square. Omega one t plus half alpha t square. So theta will become. What is the omega one? It will be two pi n one t plus half alpha t square, right? Now, so it will be two pi n one. N one is five. N one is five, and t is one twenty. Minus half because alpha is minus. Pi by 18 t square will become 120 square. Right now, beta. This is going to become how much? 10 pi. So 10 pi into 1 to 1200 pi minus. Okay. This is going to become how much? 120 square pi. By 36, this is going to become theta, right? Now, if I take 120 common, 120 pi common, 120 pi, I'll take common. So this is going to become what? 10, right? 10 minus how much? 120, right? By 36, na? So if you multiply, it will become one twenty square by thirty six, right? Thirty six. How much? Ah, one twenty. Okay. We'll take how much? Four uh, za. Three four za twelve. So approximately it will become one twenty pi ten minus six two za twelve. Six six za thirty six. So two three za two ten. So it will become ten by three. So it will become 30 minus 10. That is 20 by 3. It is going to become theta is going to become 120 pi into 20 by 3. Right or not, beta? This will become how much? 800 pi. This calculation was little longer. Theta is 800 pi. Now we need number of rotations of theta by 2 pi. So number of rotations will be theta by two pi. That will become eight hundred pi by two pi. This and this cancel. What is the answer, man? Four hundred. So number of rotations is obtained this way. Getting it? So first step, first step is find alpha. Second step is find theta, and third step is to find number of rotations will become what theta by two pi.